What it do ladies and gentlemen, this is Triple DS. By the title of this video, you know that we will be talking about a Steelers player and specifically how good this specific Steelers player is or was. Now, given that that's the case, uh, I am going to personally need to take some precautionary measurements to ensure that I get through this very smoothly. So with that being said, sit back and relax as we take a cautionary tale, or not cautionary tale, he turned out to be a Hall of Fame worthy player, as we take a deep dive into the career of one Big Ben Roethlisberger. With that being said, do me a favor, drop a like, comment, subscribe, as we're on the road to 3,000 subs. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and begin. I'm good. Good. Ben Roethlisberger was a namestay in the NFL for nearly two decades. Big Ben amassed a career that few could replicate. From Super Bowls to multiple Pro Bowls to having a winning record in 16 out of his 18 seasons, Roethlisberger has cemented his claim to one day be in the Hall of Fame. But when you break down his career piece by piece, you can begin to wonder where he stands among the upper echelon of all-time quarterbacks. So in today's video, we will discuss the career of Ben Roethlisberger to truly see how good he was. <laughs> but full disclaimer, I will not really be talking about any off the field issues as I don't believe that had much impact in his game on the field. With that being said, I will also not be biased in my feelings towards this guy. <laughs> yeah, right. So you're going to see little jabs here and there uh, that I hope you guys will enjoy. And that includes some Steelers fans too. Subscribe to the channel. Ben Roethlisberger was born in Lima, Ohio on March 2nd, 1982, and from the moment he could remember, fell in love with the game of football. Ben grew up idolizing John Elway, and it was a big reason why he would wear number seven throughout his football escapade. In high school, Ben was actually a wide receiver up until his senior season, but despite only playing a quarterback for one year, it was enough to get him into the Miami University of Ohio. After redshirting his first year, Roethlisberger would go on to tear it up over the next three seasons. From 2001 to 2003, Ben would toss 80 touchdowns to just 23 interceptions, amassing nearly 11,000 yards passing and compiling a 27 and 11 record. Ben ultimately broke and in most cases still holds on to many school records and received numerous accolades including the 2003 MAC Player of the Year. By this point, Ben was virtually a surefire first round pick. The only question was, where exactly would he go? After a whole saga involving Manning and Rivers, Roethlisberger was the next quarterback taken at 11 by the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, since his uh, career gets off rolling hot, I guess I need to get hot too. What? Roethlisberger had an immediate impact stepping in as a starter after an injury to Tommy Maddox. He led the Steelers to a 15-1 regular season record, with Ben himself having a 13-0 record personally. With the immediate success, he would win Offensive Rookie of the Year, and things would only get better for Ben and the Steelers the following year as they would win Super Bowl 40 against the Seahawks. And while it was obvious just by watching the game and even just looking at the stats that this was a carry by the rest of the team. What do you think? Still, history does not seem to care because no one brings that up how bad he actually was. But you know what? I will. I'm going to keep bringing that up because he played absolutely. Still, you couldn't deny his trajectory in his first two seasons in the NFL. In two years, Ben had totaled 34 touchdowns to 20 interceptions, surpassing 5,000 passing yards and having a league high 8.9 yards per attempt in 2005 specifically. But most important, he had a 22 and three record and a Super Bowl win already by the age of 23. The next four seasons were very up and down. In 2006, he was more turnover prone, while in 2007, he was named to his first Pro Bowl. But the two biggest takeaways during this stretch came in the 2008 season. In 2008, Pittsburgh would extend Roethlisberger to an eight year, $102 million contract the other would be the Steelers capturing their second Super Bowl title with Big Ben under center. Ben 
Tomlin, who was just in his second season as head coach, by the way, would go on a 12 and 4 run in 2008. And after defeating the Chargers and the Ravens in the playoffs, Roethlisberger would earn a matchup against the Cardinals in Super Bowl 43. And while Ben performed much better this time around, hear what I sound like this time around, he would throw the pass that he is best known for in this game. With just over 30 seconds remaining, number 7 would find Santonio Holmes in the corner of the end zone, placing the ball literally where only he could catch it, sealing the game and Ben's second ring in the process. Two years later, the Steelers would find themselves in the Super Bowl, again. this time however in a defeat to the Aaron Rodgers-led Packers. Now, following the Super Bowl loss, Ben and the Steelers would kind of just float around in the AFC over the next couple of seasons. From 2011 to 2015, Ben would tack on three more Pro Bowl nods, and they would make the playoffs twice during this stretch, but wouldn't reach the Super Bowl at any point. Roethlisberger wouldn't really hit his peak, so to speak, until his mid-30s. While the team didn't necessarily make any huge strides deep in January, Ben would really begin to climb a lot of passing leaderboards. Between 2016 and 2019, Ben and the Steelers would compile more great campaigns, but nothing that got them further down in January. But after tacking on a 5,000 passing yard season in 2018, it would amplify that he still had it, even in his late 30s. At least for now. 2019 was a lost season as he would need surgery on his elbow after just two games. But Roethlisberger and the Steelers would come firing out on all cylinders in 2020, the COVID season. Pittsburgh would start off 11-0 with Roethlisberger seemingly turning back the clock, throwing 25 touchdowns to just six interceptions and throwing for over 2,700 passing yards, which was the equivalent of 247 yards per game to that point. But after losing their first game to the Washington football team of all teams, Jokes on you, I'm into that shit. It's almost as if they became a completely different squad in a similar vein to what happened to the Eagles this past year. They would go on to lose five of their last six games, with the Washington one included, with the misery ending in the wild card round to the Cleveland Browns. This was the first time I do believe that the Steelers really considered the end being near for Ben's time in the NFL. Hoorah. By the 2021 season, the Ben that we saw during their 11 game win streak was gone. Ben's stats across the board were down. He wasn't throwing the ball as far as he once did and was virtually a statue by this point in his career. Still, the Steelers managed to sneak into the playoffs at 9-7-1, but were quickly taken care of by the Mahomes-led Chiefs 42-21. And just like that, the two-time Super Bowl champ would call it quits in 2022. Now, now, as much hijinks and little things that I've said here and there, uh, in all seriousness, let's consider truly how good this guy was during his run. Ben, during his prime, was always in the top 10 quarterback consideration, with him inching towards top 5 every now and again. The thing that went in Roethlisberger's favor is his prime lasted a hell of a lot longer than most quarterbacks. From 2006 to 2020, I do think that was the prime of Roethlisberger's career. Ben was putting up incredible numbers year in and year out during this time. And say what you will about him being carried in one of the Super Bowls, the record books will always say Ben Roethlisberger is a two-time Super Bowl champion. Not only that, Ben made it to the Pro Bowl six times in an era where Peyton Manning and Tom Brady were virtually guaranteed to take two spots every single year. He finished his career with the fifth most passing yards all time with 64,088, eighth all time in pass touchdowns at 418. To take it a step further, Ben would finish his career with a 166 and 82 and one record. I need a brace for this one again. A record that includes being 67 and 22 in the AFC North, which is a record that includes being 50 and 12 against teams in Ohio. Ugh. Given that I believe Eli Manning, someone who statistically is much worse than Big Ben in nearly every category will make the Hall of Fame someday, there is no reason to think Ben won't make it also. He may even potentially be first ballot. 
So for all these reasons, if I had to give the career of Ben Roethlisberger a grade, I'd have to give him an A. Minus. Okay, okay, okay. It's an A. But what do you guys think? Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. A huge shout out to the people that got the Tim Tebow number right. I will leave them up on screen here. And if you made it this far in the video, thus far, the alcohol's already getting to me a little bit. If you've made it this far in the video, go ahead and subscribe, guys. We're on the road to 3,000 subs. Thank you guys so much for your support. And until next time, shaboy! Yeah.